we have these relatively restrictive conditions, and I think right now uh, what I'd like to talk about is these conditions is sort of a PSA for my fellow economists. These, is, these restrictions are pretty tight, but don't go away thinking that economists are really unrealistic. These are a base set of conditions which will provide us to find an outcome. And then what we're going to do is by changing these assumptions, by manipulating these assumptions, changing one, two, or even three of them, or maybe all four, we're going to be able to write papers about because we're going to show how the equilibrium changes. Prices will go up. Prices will go down. More firms will enter. More firms will have Wages will change. All of the different things that can happen by changing one or more of these conditions. I am an applied microeconomist. And microeconomists, basically what they do is they modify these assumptions. So, for example, number one, what happens if we have a market that looks fine for conditions two, three, and four, but you happen to have one large buyer or you happen to have multiple sellers that are kind of big? Outcome could be wildly different. Look at number two. You could have everything else, one, three, and four, hold, but number two, differentiated products. Think about ready-to-eat cereal. Where do you buy cereal? You say, well, Larry, I bought it at the grocery store. But it's a little bit more, you need, I need to get a little bit more details. Not just the grocery store. You buy it at the cereal aisle of the grocery store. Now we're starting to get a little bit dicey here because now the market for this product is on one aisle in the grocery store. And that aisle has a finite amount of space. And so what happens is you have people who, economists who spend their whole career as sort of differentiated product economists. They sort of talk about these types of markets and the outcome. In an industry like that, you might see firms trying to over-proliferate brand space because the more brands that you have, if you have 17 different varieties of sugar-coated wheat or puffed rice with your name on the front, Kellogg's or whatever, you're filling up lots of space. That means new entrants don't have the same opportunity to get in because you've already got most of that. The battlefield is limited to this finite space called the cereal aisle, and that makes the outcomes in this industry much different than they would be if it was just a regular, say, competitive industry. Free entry and exit? Well, we've already talked about how you can have these types of barriers to entry type things, whether they're legal or a firm, and we'll talk about this later, may have just acquired uh, access to a very key natural resource that might make them be the only game in town. And finally, perfect information. Perfect information is really one of the more crucial assumptions here. And in fact, there's basically a whole branch of economics now called information economics because there's lots of information problems in markets. If you don't have good information, you sometimes can see different outcomes. So for example, if you were to step outside of the Smithsonian, if you go to Washington, D.C., one of the most heavily visited museums is the Air and Space Museum. It's on the mall of the Smithsonian there in, 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 in Washington, D.C. If you stepped out and looked out, there's going to be these little stands selling souvenirs. And they're basically going to sell these little plastic replicas of the Washington Monument or the Lincoln Memorial and these sorts of th all these sorts of things. If you were actually to go through, and economists have done this, and look at the prices across there, most of the prices are right at rock bottom. But some of them are remarkably high. You sort of support this two-tier different pricing. Instead of you think everybody, that seems like a pretty competitive industry, selling these little cheap trinkets. But some people will just have a very high price and hope to get somebody who has run out of time, got to make it to the airport, and doesn't have the information as to which one of these is really, the, really they just run up to the first place and say, I need two toys for my kids, I want a Lincoln Memorial, and I want a Washington Monument. Boom. Guy ends up paying 25 bucks for it. Finds out later when he th starts thinking about it at the plane, what? Well, that's because information differences can be exploited. Asymmetric information in those situations can end up causing uh, two, -tier, two different prices of market. Those who really compete for the people who do take the time to shop and look across the stands, and they're all going to be pretty much the same price. And those who just say, well, I'm only going to sell two a day, but I'm going to make a killing on those two. Somebody walks by and gets it.